first of all, I wish everyone here possible to, for a happy Mother's Day. Good morning, everyone. Ooh, I'm sorry, I'm a loud talker, so. <laughs> um, please join me in the call to work. Stand if you're able and join me in the call to worship. Grace. Forgiveness. An ability to overlook flaws and mistakes. This is the nature of our God. Let us praise him. Amen. Please join us in the hymn, Joyful, Joyful, We Adore Thee, verses 1 and 4, which will be up on the screen. Jesus cleanses us. 
from our sin. The Lord is compassionate and gracious, gracious, slow to anger, abounding in love. He will not always accuse, nor will he harbor his anger forever. He does not treat us as our sins deserve or repay us according to our inequities. For as high as the heavens are above the earth, so great is his love for those who fear him. As far as the east is from the west, so far has he removed our transgressions from us. Please join in the singing of the Gloria Patri. today is from Psalm 98. Sing to the Lord a new song, for he has done marvelous things. His right hand and his holy arm have worked salvation for him. The Lord has made his salvation known and revealed his righteousness to the nations. He has remembered his love and his faithfulness to the house of Israel. All the ends of the earth have seen the salvation of our God. Shout for joy to the Lord, all the earth burst into jubilant song with music. Make music to the Lord with the harp, with the harp and the sound of singing. With trumpets and the blast of the ram's horn, shout the joy before the Lord, the King. Let the sea resound and everything in it. The world and all we live in it. Let the rivers clap their hands. Let the mountains sing together for joy. Let them sing before the Lord, for he comes to judge the earth. 
He will judge the world in righteousness and the peoples with equity. Our second verse today is from the Epistle of John, and that will be what our sermon is based on today. Hear the word of the Lord. Everyone who believes that Jesus is the Christ has been born of God. And everyone who loves the Father loves whoever has been born of him. But this we know, that we love the children of God when we love God and obey his commandments. For this is the love of God that we keep his commandments, and his commandments are not burdensome. For everyone who has been born of God overcomes the world, and this is the victory that has overcome the world, our faith. Who is it that overcomes the world except the one who believes that Jesus is the Son of God? This is he who came by water and blood, Jesus Christ, not by the water only, but by the water and the blood. And the Spirit is the one who testifies, because the Spirit is truth. May God add understanding to the words this morning. Our message today is called God Talk. I'm not sure about the high school here in town, but there are thousands of high schools around the country and around the world that are taking a class called the Theory of Knowledge, or TOK. Perhaps it's surprising, but it might be one of the most important classes in high school curriculum. It's a course in how we get knowledge through critical thinking skills, something we might have heard of as 21st century skills. And the Apostle John, in today's reading, has some ideas about this as well. And you may just be surprised at what he suggests. So now we're going to take it a little further into this generation of young kids and talk about TikTok. If you've never heard of TikTok, it's an insanely popular video sharing social media app used to share or record short music, short talent, dance, comedy clips, everything under 60 seconds. You also might find oddly curious clips of buildings falling, lions fighting, pranksters pranking, children crying, cars racing, and more. They are short, and they just continuously loop. You could scroll for hours and not even know that time has passed. The app is not without controversy, though. When President Donald Trump was president, he threatened to shut it down. India at what time banned TikTok completely, and Pakistan, Indonesia, and other countries have done so as well. But what is interesting for our purposes in addressing the epistle reading from John today is not the tick, but the talk of this app. And this leads us in an entirely different direction. By itself, TOK, T-O-K, is an abbreviation, as I said, that's familiar to many high schoolers around the country who have the opportunity to be in the International Baccalaureate Program, also known as IB. It's offered at thousands of schools around the country and even around the world. IB is a UK-based curriculum which is very similar to advanced placements or AP courses that are offered in numerous other high schools. It motivates students in an accelerated university track academic program so they start college while they're in high school. One course, as I've already stated, as part of the IB program is called Theory of Knowledge. The students usually affectionately call it TOK, Theory of Knowledge. What happens in a TOK class connects well with our text from 1 John today. In fact, one of the principal themes in both the first letter to John and 
John's Gospel is the vexing dilemma of how to know something. How is knowledge acquired? How can we be certain that we know something? This issue lurks in today's reading, and John even mentions it specifically. By this we know that we love the children of God when we love God and obey his commandments, as was stated in verse 2. In 1 John, the theme is pervasive. In this very short letter, the word know or knowledge appears 38 times, of which some I'm going to repeat to you. In verse 2, Whoever says, I have come to know him, but does not obey his commandments, is a liar. We know that we have passed from death to life because we love one another. And by this we will know that we are from the truth. And by this we will know that he abides in us by the spirit that he has given us. Continuing on to chapter 4, by this you know the spirit of Christ, of God, every spirit that confesses that Jesus Christ has come in the flesh is from God, and every spirit that does not confess Jesus is not from God. Whoever does not love does not know God, for God is love. And finally, by this we know that we abide in him. And he is in us, because he has given us his spirit. And as though to emphasize this point a little more, John closes his letter in his epistle by reviewing this theme and purpose. He writes, I write these things to you who believe in the name of Son of God, so that you may know that you have eternal life. This verse recalls John's thesis in his gospel, explicitly identified in 20, 30 through 31. Now Jesus did many other signs in his presence of his disciples, which are not written in this book. But these are written so that you may come to believe that Jesus is the Messiah, the Son of God, and that through believing, you may have life in his name. Most people wrestle with achieving certainty. We may utter what we believe to be the truth, but it is often with quavering lips and a doubtful heart. Oscar Wilde's view notwithstanding, to believe is very dull. To doubt is intensely engrossing. How does one acquire the kind of knowledge that allows for no shade of doubt and allows for no uncertainty. Absolute certainty is probably not possible. For as we know, there are only two things which can be absolutely certain. But nevertheless, TOK students explore the possibilities. Generally, a TOK class deals with the epistemological dilemma in a fourfold manner. Ways of knowing, areas of knowledge, factors that transcends both ways of knowing and areas of knowledge, and writing a very, very long extended essay. This, then, is our rubric as we look at the epistle text that rises before us today. And as we treat this topic more generally. So here's my first question. How do we know? When asked how one can know anything, most people, after some thoughtful processing and pausing, will blurt out something about their five senses. I hear it, I smell it, I taste it, I touch it. Yes, we learn through sense perception. Although try telling that to five, five blind men describing an elephant. What's another way we can know? Through reason, maybe? We might not be sure that the fowl crossing the road is a duck, 
but when we apply reason to our uncertainty. If it looks like a duck, if it walks like a duck, if it quacks like a duck, if it has webbed feet like a duck and has feathers like a duck and also hangs out with ducks, it's probably a duck. Another way is through emotion and language. We as humans learn and know according to the TOK curriculum. Until 2014, the senses, reason, emotion, and language were the only tools for acquiring knowledge. But then, the powers that be in TOK curriculum decided to include four additional ways of knowing. Intuition, imagination, faith, and memory. The biggie here for Christians, of course, is faith. It's like a sixth sense. Sometimes we absolutely, positively know something is true, although we have no empirical evidence for it. But for the writers of Hebrew, faith is the only evidence we need. Now, faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. Hebrews 11, 1. Now, critics sometimes laugh at faith as a means of acquiring knowledge. Faith will fail you, they say. What you believe is true often turns out to be a sham, they say. Like, for example, when we place our trust in people, whether they're financial advisors, politicians, or preachers, faiths can be unreliable. But so can all of our senses. Just ask defense attorneys about eyewitness testimonies and why it's sometimes when we apply reason to a problem, the outcome can sometimes be the most unreasonable. It's possible to think logically to the wrong conclusion. So we can't knock faith just because it doesn't have empirical street cred of the five senses. Because the journey to truth is always fraught with peril. But still, none of this really captures what John the Evangelist is getting to in the text today. Somewhat of a philosopher himself, he might have agreed with Descartes or Kant on matters of knowing and being. But John moves beyond the senses. Beyond the senses of perception, of reason, of emotion, language, intuition, memory, imagination, and faith. John raises a new possibility because we learn by love. We sometimes come to knowledge by way of love. So the question from verse 2, how do we know that we love others? John's answer, if we love God and obey his commandments. This leads to an additional question. But how do we know that we love God? John has an answer for this as well. Obedience. We know not only through love, but through the evidence of that love. Obedience. Another word that we might use for obedience is praxis or practice or even experience. Walking the talk is a powerful way of certifying that we are not all talk and no walk. We are not all hat and no cattle, rather the practice of our moral code, of our core beliefs and of our faith delivers a strong message to our souls. Simply put, we love God. And we know that we love God, and we love those who love God, and we even love those who have not yet come to God. So our areas of knowledge, as I said, prior to 2014, the IB program identifies six areas of knowledge. They added those four. One might acquire knowledge in mathematics, natural sciences, human sciences, history, the arts, and ethics. But in the fall of 2014, the curriculum expanded even further. They added two more, religious knowledge systems, and indigenous knowledge systems. No one can know everything. There's, that's not possible. Some people are street smart. Some people are car smart. 
Some people are book smart. Some people are people smart. Some people are emotional intelligence smart. Some people are money smart, and so on. You might be a humanities person, while your spouse may be a maths and sciences person. In my family, my husband is a logical person, and I'm not logical. But we're also all people of faith. One area of knowledge we might be interested in is faith knowledge, or what the IB program calls religious knowledge systems. What do we know about our faith? In just a few verses in our text today from John, the Apostle John makes several key statements. Here are six of them. Belief in Jesus as the Christ is evidence that we are children of God, the parent. Love of God and love of the children of God are intertwined and linked. One cannot love one and not the other. Evidence of the depth of our love of God is the level of our obedience to the will of God. There is some way in which the children of God are winners, world conquerors. The weapon in the hands of us world conquerors is faith. These winners or world conquerors are those who believe Jesus is the Son of God. So, of course, the Bible has much more to say about the content of the body of faith. But this is what the Apostle John said today in our text. In this area of what we might call faith knowledge, some of the things we should acquire include the nature and work of Jesus Christ and our love obligation to others as well as to God. So my second and last question for today, what influences us? Perhaps we might be unaware of the factors that influence us as we try to gain our own knowledge in our life. For example, we may not quite understand the, nat the nature of knowing itself. That is, the differences between information, data, faith, and opinion. We may be insulated from a body of knowledge and opinion beyond the walls of our particular political party or religious tribe. What we take for granted as gospel truth may be hearsay to others. We might be unaware that age, education, cultural background, experience, all of those influence the sources that we prefer, the responsibilities we're willing to assume, and the claims we make. When assessing criteria for truth, we might not understand why it's important to consider coherence and consensus as critical in the quest for truth and why it is necessary to assess the reliability of reason, sense perception, faith, memory, and so much more as trustworthy justifications for the claims that we make. And we might even hear the readers of John's letter saying what all of us have said at one time or another. Why do I need to learn this? Do I need to take notes? Is there going to be a test? In other words, we might not be inclined to learn math or history or science if we don't think the knowledge is going to be used in our future. We may feel the same way about the reading and learning from today and the nature and work of Jesus Christ, or about the nature, nature and essence of God, our duties to those of the faith and even those outside of the faith, our responsibilities to our fellow human beings, especially the poor, the sick, and the marginalized. We just might not want to hear it. In fact, we may be fearful of gaining such knowledge because with knowledge comes inevitable responsibility. We were told by parents and teachers when we were little that ignorance is no excuse. But now as adults, if we're honest with ourselves, we kind of believe it deep down. Knowing God could be dangerous to my health, that is my financial health and my lifestyle health. It's better just not to know. 
So the Apostle John is concerned about knowing. He wants us to know to have certitude. Just as IB students are required to write a very long extended essay at the end of their course, perhaps that might be a good exercise for us as well. Even if we were just to write a paragraph or two, maybe a sentence or two, or for the young ones in the crowd, re record a TikTok video, what would sharing the extent of your knowledge of the faith look like? I'm going to ask that one more time. What would sharing your faith, your extent and knowledge of your faith look like? It's a really big, daunting challenge, but give it some thought. While you're thinking about it, be comforted with the good news that our mission, our salvation, God's love for us and God's provincial care for us are not matters only which we need to guess, estimate, or equivocate. Because we know. We know that God loves us. We know that we love each other. And we know that Jesus Christ is the Son of God in all we know. Amen. Please join us. Stand if you're able and join us in singing. Sing hallelujah, praise the Lord. In your bulletin it says two times. We're not singing it two times, but there are two verses. So just follow us on the screen. But him, um, sing hallelujah.
one of us in the palm of his hands. Amen. Amen.